Well, good morning, everyone. And uh, <clears throat> I really appreciate everyone standing behind me as well as friends and family for coming here today. We wanted to share a couple of important things about the active shooter incident that happened. And really, firstly, we want to say thank you uh, on behalf of the community, on behalf of the city of Albuquerque, on behalf of everyone who lives in central New Mexico area. Uh, thank you for all the heroic actions that everyone behind me took in that process. The second thing we want to also highlight, which I think this is why we all wanted to do this, even though many of the people um, who were involved in this, you know, never, never once asked for a thank you, asked for gratitude, asked to be on camera. But we wanted to let our community know, Bernalillo County, the central New Mexico area, uh, city of Albuquerque, how many people are involved in protecting us and keeping us safe. And so what you see behind me is a demonstration of all the different agencies, all the different people that were involved in this situation. And they're all folks who deserve our gratitude. But it also highlights how we have to come together as one Albuquerque, as one community, whether we work at the county or we work at the state or uh, UNM Hospital, to deal with the challenges that are right in front of us. That's what we want to highlight here today. So I want to thank you all for coming, and I appreciate the opportunity to bring together many of our first responders who rose to the occasion two weeks ago at Benny Keith Foods. <clears throat> we are fortunate that this incident did not take any lives as tragic as it was. The victims from this tragedy are recovering. We are grateful for that. But I also know this incident affected a lot of people who lived through it, who lived in the area, and who were a part of the entire scene. We want to ensure that everyone who needs help is getting the help that they, uh, that can actually help them heal through this process and deal with their trauma, whether it's physical or emotional. And if there's anything we can do from a city perspective or as part of the larger community, we are here to help you. I am convinced that lives were saved that night, many lives, and each person behind me played a key role in that process. While there's no doubt what happened was a tragedy, the silver lining is that at least the folks who were responding and the folks at Benny Keith Foods uh, were not victims of a further tragedy. For nearly everyone who's here today, they played their role. They each wore their particular hat and played a part in keeping our community safe and in dealing with that situation. They used their instincts, but they also relied on the excellent training that's been provided to them in their respective professions throughout the years. For us too, of course, in Albuquerque, uh, we did have a sergeant who was working that particular scene, and I want to single him out, even though he certainly did not ask to be, but Sergeant Brian Pitzker was one of those leaders who stepped up and took control of the situation. I want to mention him specifically for his leadership in that critical role, in that critical time. Thank you, Sergeant. Now there were many employees uh, from the company who also played pivotal roles in saving the lives of their coworkers. And we wanna make sure that the company has some time and space to recover. They're not here with us today at their own, as their own choice, but I do wanna acknowledge that uh, their coworkers in many ways played critical roles and, and indeed they were heroic for uh, their respective coworkers. And so we really appreciate their courage and thank them for their courage as well. Now, I don't want to leave anyone out. That's why we tried to make this as inclusive event as possible. And so the agencies that we have here represented today, and I, I think I have them all. Of course, we have our Albuquerque Police Department. We have Albuquerque Fire and Rescue. We have Albuquerque Ambulance. We have the Bernalillo County Sheriff's SWAT Team, Bernalillo County Fire Department, and the New Mexico State Police, and also University of New Mexico Hospital. Now, our APD Chief Mike Geyer is going to say a few words about his officers who responded to this incident. And then after, I want to welcome representatives from each agency. Uh, if there's one individual from the agency who would like to speak or share a few words with this group, please feel free to come up at that time. Uh, and let me close, I think, with this. You know, our community always steps up to help our family and our neighbors. And it doesn't matter if you live in the city, the county, uh, where we work. We all come together when we need each other. And this was such a good example of that. And as we know, you know, this incident took us all the way out near Placidas. And so this was something that actually stretched across multiple jurisdictions. And I'm grateful to say that there, across all of that exchange, across all of the entities here that were in play, 
at least to our knowledge, we were not aware of any incident, any arguments over who should do what or what the jurisdictions are or anything like that. To me, that is a reflection of leadership, it's a reflection of our values, and it's a reflection of the concept of one Albuquerque. To tell us more about the incident in APD's role, our Chief of Police, Mike Geyer. Thanks, Mr. Mayor, for taking the opportunity to organize this event to honor our first responders and our appreciation to them for their efforts on that night at Benny King. I know many of the, the officers and the personnel stand behind me are uncomfortable to get attention. Um, our people do their best work when no one's looking. And, but I also know, having been in their shoes, and it's important to recognize their efforts. Um, they, they, what they did was amazing in so many different ways. We'll, we'll address some of this today, but we want to appreciate the work of our first line, offender, or first line officers and first responders. As Mayor Keller said, no matter what their role was during this particular incident, everybody did just what they were trained to do and what they were supposed to do. The coordinated effort was amazing. It's teamwork at its finest. And as the mayor also pointed out, there was no competition in any way, nobody trying to outshine each other. They did working in coordination with each other, their roles which made this successful. Um, it's, there's no doubt talking to the medical personnel is the roles of the officers and the, first, the medical people, the ambulance people, everybody that was part of this, the first line of defense for those people to bet that for their survival was what happened in those first few minutes. And that's what was critical here is they all survived because of that. Um, I do want to highlight some of the APD people, uh, especially for their actions in this particular incident. Uh, it, was, it did come across as a possible active shooter. Um, and starting with, with the Southeast Team 8, the incident actually happened in a different area command, but again, we're all one big department, one big team. And Sergeant Brian Pitzer led the charge that night. He overheard the call um, while it was taking place in the valley, and the Southeast team just happened to be the closest. It's the next adjoining area command. Without concern for their own safety, they ran into the dangerous situation. Uh, where most people would run from gunfire, they would be the first to run into it. They didn't know what was there. They ran into harm's way but they did it to protect those injured people in there and anybody else that was still in jeopardy. Uh, by, they cleared the building, they did what they were supposed to do in those first cru crucial minutes. By getting those people out to safety, uh, again, per medical personnel were able to attend to them right away, take them from the scene and get them to the hospital within 20 minutes of the call. And that was cru crucial to their survival. Valley Team 9 uh, arrived not too much after that initial call. They also helped secure, this was a large warehouse searching a building of that nature there's there's risk and without being familiar with every little nook and cranny an offender could be hiding waiting in the, in the in the dark with a weapon to, to attack them as they do their search but nonetheless they went through and did that um, again without any concern for their own safety they also attended the victims and sorted through the confusion if you can imagine what was going on just in that pandemonium of those few minutes and the first couple minutes upon their arrival our tactical officers arrived soon after that they're used for our high stress critical incidents. They're trained for that specifically. Uh, at this time, they worked through, had to work through this incident too, and it would have been chaotic without their presence at that time. It's reassuring to have, you know, the, the people that have that specially skilled, that, that ability to kind of put things in order and coordinate the, everybody's efforts at that point. So their arrival was very timely and critical as well. Crisis negotiation team, sometimes uh, an unsung hero in many ways. Uh, they, they did outstanding work. They made communication very early on with the offender and the, uh, the offender's family, getting more information. This went on for several hours. Um, Officer John Burley was the primary negotiator that night, and he was instrumental during these communications. I listened to the tapes. Um, he talked you know, to a, a person like a human being and developed that kind of rapport that at least we came close, possibly to saving his life as well. But unfortunately, for whatever purpose the, you know, the individual decided to take his own life. But it wasn't for lack of effort on the part of the negotiators. They treated him with dignity and respect and respected the sanctity of his life, despite the, the tragic event that this individual was just involved in. I think his efforts also may have prevented further violence from that offender just by the way that he approached and talked to the individual throughout those few hours. And lastly, from our department, and these are again un unrecognized heroes, was a dispatcher. Officer Ashley Herrera was the first to take the call, and officers credit her as a game-changing dispatcher, uh, game-changing dispatcher for the way she calmly and directed, and coordinated the, the request from uh, Sergeant Pitzer and the other units on the scene. Uh, 
was she was the quarterback and she was getting that information and making sure people were going to the right places in a timely manner and i can imagine her job at that point was probably the most hectic ten minutes of her life but during the stress she she remained calm and she also contributed to the life-saving work that night again the, the remarkable efforts of the coordinator of all these different units and i think the city can be proud of all of them and rest assured that that they're there for us in, in time our time of need i don't know who's next but i will turn it over to anybody from the fire department or any any agents any other ambulance hospital chief paul down good morning thank you all for coming here today i just wanted to emphasize that these incidents they're complex they're fast moving and i'm so proud of of all the men and women standing behind me that respond to these types of incidents on a regular basis. Uh, when they arrive, they have limited, limited information and you've got to work with multiple agencies on different radio frequencies and it's just impressive. And I want the public to know that it doesn't happen by accident. It's the training, it's the multi-agency responses that we do on a regular basis that keep us prepared. And I want you to know that you have great men and women working on the streets every day, making sure that incidents like this are taken care of um, as quickly as professionally as possible. Thank you, Hi there. Uh, I'm Jim Williams, the Deputy Chief of the Albuquerque Ambulance Service. Uh, we responded five units to the scene of the, of the shooting. Uh, fortunately, we only had to utilize uh, three of the units for transport. Uh, our teams worked seamlessly with Albuquerque Fire in Berlin County. Uh, they were able to get in and uh, rapidly get uh, patients right off the scene. Due to the rapid response and excellent teamwork, I believe we saved some serious lives that night. Thanks. Hello. Uh, my name is Brian Cato. I'm from the Burnley County Fire Department. I'm the Deputy Chief. And I want to reiterate what Chief Dow said, and it's, it's a team thing. We all get out there. Our guys are very well trained. And it's, it's opportunities like this that we don't want to go into, but when we have to go into it, we come together and we're able to work really well as a team. We are very fortunate for Bernalillo County to have our uh, program manager for our active shooter program working that shift. And all of our personnel are trained up to, up to speed, but it's nice when you have the guy that's, that's doing the job for us to be there and lead his his team members in um, and work well with, with all the agencies that were here. So we thank everybody that was here, everybody that worked on the scene, and thanks for this opportunity. Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Under Sheriff Rudy Moore with the Burnwheel County Sheriff's Office. Um, you know what, there's no one single factor more important in keeping our community safe than the partnerships that we have behind us. Um, uh, I, I just want to personally thank the mayor since his uh, coming into office, his partnership with the county and his open door policy to work together to, uh, to keep people safe. Uh, same thing with uh, Chief Geyer, utmost respect for you. Uh, he's always had an open door. and. Um, you know what, I've always said over the course of my career, we fight organized crime with unorganized law enforcement. And with the leadership that we have here today, you know, I know we're making uh, strives to keep our community safe. Uh, again, I want to thank our Bernalillo County SWAT team for uh, always being willing to go out there and protect and serve. The men and women behind me, uh, my hat's off to you. Uh, I'm raising my family here and my grandkid. Um, so thank you from my heart. Hello, um, I'm Dr. Darren Brody from the University of New Mexico. Um, on behalf of your local and state's level one trauma center, um, just wanted to say that we're happy that we could be of assistance. Um, but what we did that night is unfortunately the same thing that we do almost every night. Um, we have to take care of victims of, of violent crime all the time. Um, what was different that night um, was what happened before the patients got to us. Um, and so we would really like to recognize as well everybody who's behind me um, because what they did that night um, is similar to things they do every night, but this was obviously a more intense situation um, and we have great respect for that um, and we're glad that we could play a small, small part of that caring for those patients. So thank you very much.
Okay, I think that um, covers the different agencies that we wanted to touch on. Uh, State Police couldn't make it down here today, uh, but uh, we certainly appreciate the role that they played in this as well. Let me just end by saying, you know, we, it was not lost on me at all um, during Thanksgiving, even with our families and our kids and thinking about how much it means for uh, our community to be safe and what that means. Uh, for everyone, and it's not lost on me for a single day as mayor uh, how important it is everyone who's behind me and everyone who's out in the field right now doing that job. And so I want to say thank you, and I think let's give each other just a round of applause and congratulations on the job. Well done. So what we're going to do, there's a tradition in the military and in law enforcement, and now actually kind of throughout government, uh, of coining individuals who have done something uh, extraordinary. And so we're going to do that process here. Due to the large number of folks, we have separate sets of coins. Uh, so the chief has some for APD folks. I have them for others. And I know there's a few of you who I already coined. So if you don't mind uh, just saying uh, pass into the next person, let me know. And so we'll do that. And then we'll head up for a picture. And then I think Alicia can arrange one-on-ones if folks want them with anyone else uh, who's up here today. Thank you.